get started, but let's start with that sip first. Welcome to my channel. My name is Candice, AKA Picasso Baby. And today I'm gonna be showing you how you can do a DIY paint and sip right at home. I am the artist and owner of Paint Party, a mobile paint and sip company right in Detroit, Michigan. We specialize in helping you make memories and masterpieces right at home. Since we're in quarantine, I'm gonna show you how you can have a paint and sip right at home with your spouse, your children, or even just by yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. What you'll need for your paint and sip is a canvas of any size. You'll need an easel to put your canvas on, or you can just lay your canvas on the table. You'll also need some different color acrylic paints. I like to use Blick acrylic paints. And you'll also need some different size brushes for your paint. Make sure you fill a cup with cold water to place your brushes in whenever you're not using them. And you'll also need some napkins to dry your brushes off and a plate for your paint. As far as the subject of your painting, if you're just freehanding and just going with the flow, you don't have to worry about a thing. If you would like to trace out or draw an image on your canvas, you definitely can use any type of pencil or marker to do so. Or if you wanna look up a photo, you can do that as well. I've looked up a photo of a dream catcher and that's what I'm gonna be adding on here today. And most importantly, if you're 21 and up, you want to make sure that you have your sip. So we're going to go ahead and get started, but let's start with that sip first. So what you want to make sure to do first is go ahead and put your brushes right inside of your water cup. You want to make sure to leave them in your water cup whenever you're not using them. That way they don't dry out. And then you can also go ahead and pour your paint right on your plate or your palette. What I'm going to do first, and I do this for every painting, I start out by painting my background. So for my background, I wanna make sure to use my biggest brush. And my background is gonna be a gradient of colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my lightest color and I'm gonna work my way down to my darkest color. So I'm starting from here and I'm gonna actually place the colors that I'm gonna use, that way I can see them. So I'm gonna be doing a layer of pink I'm going to go into a bit of a darker layer of pink and then I'm going to do a little bit of green and a little bit of blue and a little bit of green here. So I'm going to transition all of my colors together and one key thing that I'm going to do while transitioning and blending all of these colors is I'm going to make sure to pick up a little bit of white with each color that I'm using. So now that the background is completely filled in, before we can add any more details, we have to let it dry completely. So if you're a patient person, you can let it air dry and have a sip of wine while you do so. Or if you're a pretty impatient person, you can go ahead and grab a blow dryer. A blow dryer will dry this background in about one to two minutes. And if you let it air dry, it takes anywhere from five to 10 minutes. So whichever you choose, go ahead and dry your background. All right, so now that the background is dry, we're gonna go ahead and start to sketch out the dream catcher. Now, before you start to sketch, if you wanna be sure that your background is dry, of course you can touch your painting, or if you just wanna look at it, as long as it's no longer shiny, that means it's dry. Once it becomes um, like a matte texture, it's dry. So we're gonna go ahead and start. And before we were using a pretty big brush for the background, I'm gonna actually go ahead and switch to more of a medium sized brush. It can be a medium round brush or a medium flat brush. I'm using a medium round. And I'm gonna mix up the color that I want my dream catcher to be. I want my dream catcher to be almost like a mint color. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up. And this dream catcher is really, really simple. I don't 
want it. If you want yours to be right in the middle, you can place yours wherever you'd like. I want mine to kind of hang from the corner here. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the larger circle for my dream catcher. So I'm kind of just making a circle that goes up to this corner. And once you have the line on there, you can go back and make it as wide as you'd like. So I'm gonna go back and kind of make it a little wider. I'm also adding white to my brush to give it a little more detail. So in some spots it's a little darker, in some spots it's a little bit lighter. Again, picking up that white just gives it more detail and it helps your color go on a lot smoother. And then the second thing you're gonna need for your dream catcher is the dream catcher has a middle circle. So I'm gonna put a small circle right in the middle there. And again, we're basing everything off of this corner. So you wanna make sure that you're basing everything off of the corner. Now, before we start to add any of those extra kind of web lines in there, we wanna add on the feathers because I'm gonna pull my lines on top of the feathers. So I want a few feathers that are the color of my dream catcher. And the way I'm gonna make the feathers is super, super simple. All I'm gonna do is take my brush and flatten it and then quickly pick it up. And you can go back and make it as wide as you like. Same thing here. I'm gonna do another one down here so you can see it. Flatten it, quickly pick it up. And then you can go back and make it as big as you'd like. Or even if you want some extra detail from one of the sides, you can go in and pull quick little lines out to give it that feathered effect. I'm going to do a few more that are this color. So again, flattening my brush and then going back over to make it wide. And if you want to pull out those extra lines, you definitely can. I'm gonna add some different colors as well. And you wanna make sure whatever color feather that you add is not the same color as your background. So for example, I'm gonna add in some blue feathers, but I'm gonna place the blue feathers a little higher up in the pink, that way they don't clash with the blue part of my background. So same thing here. Again, pulling some little pieces out to the side there to give it that feather look. And you can add as many or as few feathers as you'd like. Again, this is your painting, so you can add your own twist and your own style to it. I'm gonna go ahead and use, I'm gonna use some orange. And I'm gonna mix it to make it a different tone of orange. So now I wanna go in and I'm gonna add, and I kinda created this like a bit of a rusty orange. But I'm going to go back and add some regular orange colors as well. And again, just so that you can see that technique again, all I'm doing, flattening my brush. And you can make it wider if you'd like. And then you can go and pull out those extra lines to make it more feather-like. So I'm going to add some light orange ones too. And you can kind of curve your feathers in any direction. If you want to add extra detail, remember picking up that white adds more detail to it and gives it a little more dimension as well. So I'm going to put a small one there. And I think I'm going to do a few pink ones, just some quick, small pink ones. So we have our feather on, 
So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. So now that you have the dream catcher and the feathers on there, we want to go back and add in the details. So adding in the webbing of the dream catcher and also adding in the lines that hold the feathers. So for this part, if you were using a round brush, you can continue to use that brush or you can switch to a smaller brush. And I'm going to be using black paint this time. Again, this is your painting, so if you want a different color, it's completely up to you. But I'm going to be using black paint. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create some details around this part to create webbing. So if you want to bring your webs all the way to the end of the dream catcher, you definitely can. If you don't want to, that's completely up to you. I'm going to bring mine all the way to the end. And I'm going to be doing a really simple detail. Curve a line in. Curve another line in. And I'm going to be doing that all the way around until I have the space filled in. So I'm going to go right next to it and do the same thing. And again, I'm doing this all the way around. And these lines do not have to be perfect. Remember, we're not trying to create Van Gogh paintings or anything of that sort. We're just having fun while we paint and while you sip. Now, in between each of these, I'm going to add one more extra detail. I'm going to add a small circle. Just to give it some more detail. And again, you can add the type of webbing that you want. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Now, what I'm going to do to bring the feathers together is I want to go through with a line that's kind of hanging from the, web, the dream catcher. So, I want to pull the line right on top. That way, it looks like it's hanging from it. And I'm going to pull this line all the way down. And it's going to go, you see how I pulled it right on top of the feathers? So you want to go down to the longest feather. And then from there, you can pull more lines down. So even from here, I'm going to pull a little line down to this feather, a little line down to that feather. And I'm going to repeat the same step on these as well. I'm just doing three lines, but you can do as many lines for your feathers as you want. So for example... I'm going to pass this feather and take this down to the lowest one. And then I'm going to go back and add a little line going to the smaller feathers. Same thing here. And I'm going to go back and connect the feathers that I need to connect. So now that I have all of my feathers connected, and again, you want to make sure that it's crossing over your dream catcher. Now that I have all of my feathers connected, before I add on any of the beads that you can have on dream catchers, I want to actually add some words on my painting. Now, this part is optional. If you just want the dream catcher, it's completely up to you. But if you want to add words, you can continue to use whatever size brush you'd like. Um, I like to use either a really fine point medium brush or a smaller brush to do my words and I'm just going to write keep dreaming at the top or you can even do this if you have a paint marker you can do it with a paint marker um, if you have a permanent marker and you just want to write it on there you definitely can do it with that as well it's completely up to you how you write in your words and what words you write So again, I am doing keep dreaming.
And now I'm gonna go back and start to add in some beads. Now for my beads, I am gonna switch to a bit of a smaller brush. And you can create whatever color beads you want. I'm just gonna use the colors that I already have mixed on my plate. And you can do different color beads in different spots. So for example, and for the beads, all you're doing once you pick up the paint, you're just pretty much creating a line right on top of those black lines that we have. And you can do them wherever you want to see them at. It's completely up to you where you place them, what colors you use. It is your choice. How many you do. And if you feel like your, your black paint isn't dry enough yet, again, you can give it a few minutes to dry or you can go back to um, the blow dryer. If you use the blow dryer before, you can go ahead and grab that blow dryer to blow dry the lines before you add your beads on. I'm just going to do a few more. I'm going to do some pink beads. And again, I'm just adding in a few where I want to see them at. Where you place yours is up to you. And once you have those details in, the very last thing you want to do for your painting is you want to simply choose whatever color you'd like. I'm going to get a little bit of black and I'm going to add in my signature or you can add in your initials. I'm just going to do my signature right here in the corner. And you now have your painting. So you have your beautiful dream catcher or whatever you chose to paint. And you can toast to that. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I really hope you enjoy your beautiful masterpiece. And I can't wait to paint with you again.